Hey guys, welcome back to Uncle Charters' YouTube channel. It looks like we finally broke out the Fibonacci level. I had a Fibonacci level at 536.36. The initial test was a rejection, got a pullback, bounce off support today. And well, we got the close at the end of the day. It interesting, interesting how it happens right before CPI and FOMC. They make it hard to trust. The breakout because you guys know with CPI and FOMC anything can happen and it's going to be volatile. It's going to be big. Hopefully it's going to be crazy. Okay. Very unpredictable when, when we got these data release dates. All right. Either way, we have to pay attention to the context. Okay. The context of the chart. We got the breakout of the next Fib level. That means as long as above 536.36, we are in breakout mode. That is very bullish. And if we break back below it, that'll give us a false breakout setup. Show us a sign that the breakout, you know, it was not a real one. And that SPY is not ready to go up. I tell you this, the, sometimes, a lot of times, the first breakout is not the successful breakout. Uh, it's usually, to, you know, try to... The market makers, they try to draw people in first, try to draw the bulls in, and then maybe they'll pull back, give us a false breakdown set up. They pull back and then break out on the second attempt or third attempt. Usually the third attempt is more legit. First and second attempt, very tricky. It's just something to keep in mind, guys. That's why I love the false breakouts and the false breakdown setup so much. Trade with the traps. Uh, and let me let me go to the 15-minute chart. I know some of you guys don't like it, but a lot of you guys... You guys hear me give you guys these levels. You guys don't quite know what to do with the information I'm giving to you guys. So I just want you guys to know. Alright? So when I give you guys these levels, like for example, I gave you guys the 535 level, the 533 level. And I mentioned many times, don't get bearish until we lose that 531.5 level. So you guys can see, when I say, for example, guys, above 531.5, we are bullish. And that's what I've been saying all week. I said that last week when we got that breakout. Why? Because it's a breakout above its breakout mode. So when we're in breakout mode, unless we get a false breakout, we want to look for buying opportunities. What are the setups for buying opportunities? Breakout of resistance and false breakdown setup. Now, I'll give you an example right here. Boom. Okay. Example right there on the 15-minute chart. I use the 15-minute chart when I use these levels for intraday trading. Swing trading, you use a four-hour or higher. Okay, but for intraday chart, I use a 15-minute chart, nothing lower. Okay, you guys can see here, at this 945 candle, we broke down my 533 level. And then the next candle, we recaptured 533. This is an example of a false breakdown setup. It did not break the equilibrium level. The equilibrium level was 531.5, which I would have turned back to bearish if we dropped below it. Because on the daily chart, the bigger time frame, that would have been a false breakout setup you guys see here we test as resistant we broke it out test it as support okay i couldn't get bearish unless we broke down 531.5 and i hopefully you guys can see why i say what i say but once we tested it we got the false breakdown setup setups like these are your trigger to go long or buy calls okay because this is trading with the trap and off the momentum of the trap it led to a breakout of 535 now this one there was no false breakout there was no false break now was riding the momentum of the trap but look at the look at the behavior sorry look at the behavior false breakout and it it reached some type of top right here okay i had a target of 535 but it reached some type of top and we noticed some type of top because it pulled back from there it's not one of my levels but it definitely pulled back from there and this right here you can see the behavior of the price action how it put in a, a higher low all right this is smaller time frame stuff same concept on the higher time frame but this is smaller time frame stuff so with this higher low that made the next breakout something worth watching the next potential breakout okay i trusted this breakout and yes it was alerted in the discord because it's one it was riding off momentum of the false breakdown and two it was riding off the momentum of a higher pivot low on the smaller time frame and then the breakout on the 15-minute chart of 535 led to the nice level-to-level -level move to the upside, okay? Breakout of resistance like this, you buy calls, okay? I usually don't trust the first test or the first breakout, but the second or third or something like this that's riding off the false breakdown and you get a pivot low like this after retest pivot low, 
a higher pivot low, boom, that's good for calls. Does that make sense? And it works reverse for puts. So if we break, like if we retest, if, you know, we test a resistance level for the first time and it get a breakout and then it close back below, that's a false breakout and I would look for puts. Or if we break down a support level after we're riding, riding momentum off of a false breakout, I would look for puts. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense, guys? All right. So based on those concepts that I'm trying to tell you guys, we got the breakout of 536.36. Best time to go short is when we get a false breakout. So we got to break back below for the false breakout. False breakout equals puts. All right? But as long as above, 538 and 540 are in play. They're the next target, the next take profit target. Does that make sense, guys? CPI, FOMC tomorrow, guys. It's going to be crazy. Know the levels, know the setups, and trade it unbiasedly. Okay? Don't trade it biasedly because once the market makes this move, it's going to trick you out. It's going to design. It's designed to take your money. And if you allow it to, it's going to. So you got to trade unbiasedly. Okay. Triple Q. It looked like it cleared some more resistant levels as well. I mentioned to you guys above 464.7 is bullish. Clearing 466 would be bullish. And it hit and also cleared my 467.2 level. I'm giving you guys accurate price action trade ideas. Why do I have... Less than 10k subscribers still. Why people don't love Uncle Charters? This is very depressing. Anyways, now that we got the breakout, I don't I wouldn't recommend the short unless we break down 467.2 and 466. Alright? Like I said, we need the false breakout setup in order to trigger puts. Otherwise, we are in breakout mode. The next target is 469.3 and 471.7. Alright, guys. Above 467.2 is bullish below it. We get a false breakout setup, could be bearish with the low targets in play. Tesla, uh, it definitely showed some follow through and it definitely broke down that 172.7 level. Treated 174.6 as a resistant and it broke down the next support. I, I told you guys this in yesterday's video. You know what I mean? I'm not doing this to brag and boost my ego. I'm doing this to help people. Why do I have less than 10K subscribers? I don't know. Anyways. So next support is at 170 and 168.8. If those levels fail, more downside is possible with 167 or lower in play. Trust no bounce unless 172.7 recaptures. 172.7 recaptures, I would trust the bounce at 174.6, 176, and 178 in play. NVDA, we got ourselves an inside candle here. Like a bit of consolidation, trying to figure out where it wants to go. Okay, uh, let's see. It closed around 120.9. Is that means next support it's at 119.2 and 118 for a deeper pullback? Those two levels, 119.2 and 118, must fail. If it does, more downside incoming. All right, for to be bullish, 121 and 123 needs to clear. New level, 121 and 123 needs to clear. Uh, that would that would put 124.7 or higher in play, okay, or new all-time highs in play. If there's no setups, then there's nothing to do. Just sit down, be patient, wait for the right setup, play the levels and setups, and get your money. Don't force trades. Apple, here's the thing that disappoints me. I mentioned to everybody for free in yesterday's YouTube video for Apple. So make sure you guys go long or buy calls of 194.2 recaptures. I think I said it multiple times. I repeated myself. How many people didn't listen to Uncle Chartis? Almost everybody. How many people didn't play this the, my trade idea? My free trade idea that I give to you? Almost everybody. Uncle still has less than 10k subscribers. But let's do this anyways for those that um that does find value in my work. Free trade idea. This is life changing money. Nobody listens to Uncle Charters. I have less than 10K subscribers. I'm very depressed. It's been a very, very depressing year for me. Nobody cares. Little to nobody. All right, so 197.97 is the pivot high here. And then the low, there's a one-hour chart. I got to do a one-hour chart because the, the, the candle went crazy. The low is at 191.45. All right. 
So as you guys can see, Apple went so darn high, not even the fib levels can catch it. But we also use supply and demand zones on Uncle Charles' channel. And based on this one o'clock candle, there was a supply zone or supply -ish bearish activity around 206. That is first support. And then based on the fib levels, 204.5, 203, and 201.2 are the next support levels for Apple. For me to favor a pullback, 206 and 204.5 gotta break down the trigger shorts. Otherwise, as long as above those levels, we are melting up to new all-time high. Next resistance I have is 208, and if that clears, we are heading to uncharted bullish territory. AMD still looking bearish to me. What's today's low? 159.6. Yeah, break down. It broke down 160. So next support I have is at 158. That level's failed. Gap fill time at 153. With next support below that, 150 and 148.5-ish. All right? Trust no bounce unless 161.8 clears. 160 and 161.8 recap. There's a level recapture. I'll trust the bounce a little bit. Amazon lingering, trying to defend that 186.8 breakout. As long as above it, still technically bullish, but it needs to show follow-through by clearing 188 and 190. All right? If we break down 186.8, that's a bearish warning. But if it's truly strong and it's truly is intended truly to go to the downside, the 185 support must fail for bearish follow through. Netflix same plan as yesterday. Got to break down 639 to be bearish. But as of right now, it is looking bullish. I mentioned to everybody if we clear 644.7 to look too long. I don't think anybody listens to me because I still have less than 10k subscribers. Anyways. Next resistance is at 650. If that level clears, more upside is in play. Look to react to the price action. This is how we trade price action. 656 would definitely be a target. All right. If it's pullback time, well, 648, 646, and 644.5 needs to break down to favor a pullback. Bear buys below 639. As of right now, play the setups. Clear 650 would be bullish. All right. Now, here is Bitcoin. It's bearish. I mentioned to everybody, if we lose that 69K level, bearish. Do you believe me now? Of course you don't. Uncle still has less than 10K subscribers. Anyways, next support's at 67.2K. If that level fail, guess what? More downside, 65.1K, 63.1K would be a target. I will trust no bounce unless 69.2K recaptures that double top is in place still unless 69.2k recaptures all right let's take a look at the dark pool level 1.2 billion in premium at 536.88 for the spy holy moly donut shop and the flows of 400k premiums or above are bearish triple q it's bearish tesla is bearish NVDA is a bullish. A Apple is, is bullish. AMD is bullish. Bullish for Amazon. Bullish for Netflix. And this is for Bitcoin. But we'll look at Beetle, the stock, and nothing for Beetle. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.